Okay, so I'm going to do this over again. I went a little bit over, and I'm kind of glad I did, so I could be a little more concise. And also walk you through a pitfall that I discovered, um, or a uh, <laughs> road you can go down and waste a little more time with <clears throat> that I'll try to uh, help you avoid here. Because, again, this is just this is all about right, <laughs> walking the type road to get this to work right. You have to know what works at this time. Okay. So, uh, so far on my system, and I'm going to explain how I got to that point, and then I'm going to try to move on, is I have the um, on-demand scan feature installed. The one thing that I do not have is the in-time scanning. So, uh, all the process processes or the processes the, the program are able to, to, to um, monitor as I go are... Uh, are that's that feature of the antivirus program is not being utilized. So uh, to get that, the way to go is to go to actually the the vendor's download page and not to go into the AS Control Center. If you go into the AS Control Center and you select um, antivir and antivir GUI, which it sounds great, but when you try to run it, you're going to get an error that says that you're uh, you don't have the correct license key. And I wasn't able to figure out um, how to place a license key in the right spot. I, I went to the site, downloaded their license key, and put it in the spot where I believed it belonged. And it still wouldn't work, so I gave up on it and uninstalled it from Sat, from uh, from Yast, Susie's Yast, and I ended up downloading the um, the program that's already compiled for you. You just have to run a script to get it to run from their website. So I'll show you where that is. And it's a little tricky to get to. So, you know, getting this program to work right and fully featured is is not easy to do. <laughs> I'll just say that. So it is, it happens to be at HTTP, there it is, okay, freeav.com, free slash av.com. And what I did is I clicked on sitemap, then I clicked on free antivir personal. Then I, for here, it's hard to see, but it says, for the personal Unix version, click here. So I click there. All these other stuff, free this, free that, don't click on that, you'll end up going in circles. You want to download this file, and you might as well just save it. And then also the license file and save that. I've, I've already done that process. So when it's finished in OpenSUSE, it'll end up landing in your downloads folder, not your home directory, so if you're wondering where it is, that's where it is. And when you use ARC, after you double click on the Firefox, you know, we're, we're done We're done downloading now, uh, you double click on the file, it's going to end up looking like this, and what you do is you click on the folder up there. If you don't click on any of the folders, in fact, let me try that again, try to demonstrate some of the confusion I've had with ARC. If you don't click on any of the folders and you try to go to Action, Extract. Well, it, I guess it gives you the it gives you the option to go to root. But I think as a regular user, both of these are blacked out, and all you can do is select this function here and pick the directory to go to. And I picked root, and that made Avir Workstation Personal with the version number show up, the directory show up underneath that. Okay, so I've closed that. And those of you who are a little more familiar with antivirus saw that I've downloaded the Zuba file system that turned out to be for not. And that's, that's a whole other um, problem. Now, once you're in there, once you've got it downloaded and extracted, because ARC will unzip it for you, the instructions uh, in the readme file will say tell you to run some tar command from the command line. You can do that. Graphical user interface and have the same result. The next thing you want to do, I'm going to go back to my home directory because I've got ahead of myself here, is I'm going to change cd space, I'm just going to type the letter A, if there's not much in there you can press tab, it'll complete it for you, press enter and then I go install. But before I do that, I'm going to want to see if I can get, um, look at my notes here too, uh, if, I, if I can get the Dezuko file system set up and working. And I'm also going to uh, play around with the uh, antivir GUI, even though it's going to give me a warning when I try to install it, uh, 
that it's not working. I mean, I'll explain one thing right here that's a little bit messy about when you're using Linux. So if I go into software management, notice you know this software manager is going to take a little bit of a little bit too much time for my taste. And also, hopefully, I'm not over again. No, I'm only about halfway. I'm only about maybe six minutes. If I type in virus in here, it's going to give me antivir and antivir GUI. Now, this program, this RPM, to install antivir GUI requires antivir. So if I don't have that checked off, it's going to give me a warning. Well, I'm going to break something or other. It needs antivir, AV guard, blah, 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 blah. Well, I've already got that installed with this package that I've just downloaded, and then when and then when I end up in running this install script here, um, that'll be the same thing as checking off of that. But the RPM database is going to have any record of this having been installed. And the reason why I'm using this is because when I check off these two, I can't get it licensed. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go with the GUI, and I'm going to ignore the warning because I know that this dependency is there even though the RPM database doesn't have that. That's at least my plan. Now, um, also you can see here there's something called Clam Antivirus, and I know a bunch of uses that, and I think it's a pretty good product, but I'm doing this uh, antivir because there's an equivalent version in Windows, and if you have comfort with the Windows version, you should have comfort with the Linux version because they use the same virus definitions, which I explained in part one. So, um, but I, but I have nothing against antivir. Antivir has caught um, twelve thousand virus emails that have been sent in the past thirteen months, close to thirteen thousand, about a thousand a month. So it's nothing to shake a stick at. <laughs> it's a good program. The virus definitions, I believe, are maintained by the Clam Antivirus community. And I think I've got all my notes covered here to where I was. Now, what I have to do to get the uh, as you go or in time uh, virus scanning to work, you know, to be covered. As soon as I boot in, the virus scanner is working and it's monitoring whatever it's configured to monitor and, and it'll keep going. You know, nothing, you know, if a piece of malware tries to download from the internet, it'll catch it there versus me having to run the command line. I have to have the Dezuko uh, file system module uh, loaded. And I noticed that when I try to. Um, Just load that up as a module. It says it doesn't have it, and uh, if I even try to Zuko, it says it doesn't have it. So the SUSE kernel ships without that Zuko model module uh, compiled and ready for the user. So since it's not there, then um, what you have to do is you have to compile. You have to compile that module yourself. Now, if you think if you're going to go over to the um, the uh, Dezuko web Dezuko.org webpage and download the cur the sources for the module that's for your kernel and have it work in OpenSUSE, uh, my my quick answer for you is that, that that's not going to work. And I'll show you. Um, might as well because I think I have the time. If I go into, I've already downloaded that file system from Dezuko.org. I'm not going to show where it is because I'm not going to recommend it, for at least for OpenSUSE. And then if I um, try to do make, actually I just type make. It'll tell me that it doesn't have, you know, a, a folder called 2634702 slash desktop, and there is no folder like that, so it's not going to work. I could monkey around and try to rename that folder, but uh, I'm afraid of messing up my system's ability to load other modules, so I'm not going to mess with it. Instead, I'm going to go into the kernel configuration module, and if you're going to, and I'm going to stop before I start that, and uh, if you do that, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you have enough hard disk space. I'll cover that when I start again.